Let's be honest, the Sony a7 Mark III is not the easiest camera to get comfortable with, but there are some really great custom settings that will drastically improve its functionality. So in this video, I want to show you a few settings and functions that will not only help you get the most out of your a7 Mark III, but also make it a lot easier to use. I'm going to be covering things like customizing your camera and some handy functions that will help you get better quality images. So if you're a beginner or you're new to the Sony system, or even if you've had your Sony a7 Mark III for a while, but you just haven't really gone into setting it up properly, definitely make sure you watch the entire video because there's something here for every type of a7 Mark III user. Now the Sony a7 Mark III menu is notorious for being complicated and it can take ages to scroll through all the different sub menus to find what function you're looking for. So I find it incredibly handy to have a few functions or menu items in the custom menu. This way they are super easy to find and I can access them very quickly. You can find this custom my menu under the very last menu item, marked with a star symbol. To add an item to the custom menu, go to page two and select add item. Then look for whatever menu item you want to have in your custom menu, for example, interval shooting settings, and next you can select the custom menu you want this item to be in. You can create five different custom menus and you can select where in the custom menu you want the item to be. And then you'll see your selected menu item appear in your custom menu. Of course, the menu item is also still available at its original place in the menu, so you can see this as kind of a shortcut menu. Another great function for improving your workflow on the Sony a7 Mark III are the custom memory modes. They are the number one and two on your camera mode dial. You can essentially save lots of different settings into a specific mode. So for example, if you have distinct settings for different types of photography, that you're doing or the way that I use it for having a quick switch between normal video shooting at 24 frames per second and slow motion video shooting at 120 frames per second. This is how you set up the custom modes. Set up your camera to the settings you want for your first custom mode. In this example, I'm setting it up for 24 frames per second normal speed 4K video recording. So I will first set my movie settings in the movie one menu on page one of nine. Set the file format to 4K and the recording settings to 24p at 100 megabytes per second. I will then go into the camera one menu at page 12 of 14. Here I can select picture profile number seven, which is S-Log2. I will then set my shutter speed at one over 50, my aperture to f1.8, and my ISO at the base 800. You can of course change and save a lot more settings, but for this example, I'm not gonna change anything else. Once you have all the settings you want, go to the camera one menu to page three of 14, then select memory. You can then select memory slot one or two. And in this example, we're setting up custom mode number one on our mode dial, so I will select number one. So now every time I turn my mode dial to number one, I will automatically have all my video recording settings ready to go. And the same principles go for setting up custom mode number two. You can also use four other custom modes, M1, M2, M3, and M4. However, these custom modes are not being saved to your camera's internal memory, but on your memory card. So every time you format your memory card or you insert a new memory card, you will lose these custom modes. And I'll show you a few more custom buttons in a second, but first I wanna show you a very simple setting that I personally think everyone should change. Now changing this setting does come down to personal taste if I'm being honest, but if you're ever photographing around other people or you're for example photographing wildlife, then it might be a good idea to turn off all the beeps and noises coming from your a7 Mark III. To do this, go to the camera two menu and scroll to page nine of nine, custom operations two. Here you'll see an option audio signals where you can turn off all the beeps. However, you can also make the camera completely silent, so no sound coming from the shutter. And this can be especially handy when shooting wildlife or events. You'll find this option under the camera two menu on page four of nine, where it says shutter steady shot. Here you can select the first option silent shooting. And when turned on, it allows you to shoot images without the sound created by the mechanical shutter.
When you're shooting in manual focus, it's sometimes hard to get the focus exactly where you want it. But the A7 Mark III has a function called focus peaking, which can guide you to dial in the correct focus. The way it works is the camera will highlight parts of your image that it thinks are in focus. For example, here, the parts that are highlighted in red are in focus. To activate it on the A7 Mark III, go to the camera one menu and then to page 13 of 14, focus assist. At the bottom, you'll see the option peaking setting. Here you can turn the peaking function on or off. You can then set the peaking level. I have it set to mid. And lastly, you can set the peaking color. I use red because I think this is the one color that will most unlikely blend into the background of any images that I'm shooting. And I think it's handy to set a custom button so that you can easily activate focus peaking whenever you're shooting in manual mode. To set a custom button, go to page eight of nine in the camera two menu where it says custom operations one. Select custom key and then choose a button. I chose the down button because it was the only one I still had unassigned. Now when photographing, I can simply hit the down button and it will enable or disable the focus peaking mode. And even more about custom buttons in just a little bit. Another great function that the Sony a7 Mark III has are the exposure zebras or zebras. These will help you dial in the correct exposure when taking an image or shooting video. Essentially, exposure zebras are a setting that alert you of any clipped highlights in your image. When taking a photo or when filming, the camera screen will display a pattern of black and white stripes over any area in the image, allowing you to monitor the highlight values. You can find the zebra settings in the camera 2 menu at page 6 of 9 under display auto review 1. When you select zebra settings, the first option is to turn the zebras on or off. The second option is to turn the zebra level. And this is very important to understand because this determines what information the zebras are giving you. At the lowest setting of 70, the zebras will show you highlights that are at 70% brightness. So they will not be overexposed, but they are where they need to be for a correct exposure. And you'd ideally use this setting when you're shooting video. However, if you're shooting raw photos, I would advise you to set a custom level. So you can go to custom one, and then set the standard to 80, leave the range at 5, and set the lower limit to 109 plus. And you can set it this high because the raw files are able to capture a lot more data than for example a JPEG where the limit would be 100. So now the zebra pattern will only show up when you pass the highlight clipping range for the raw image files. And I personally leave these exposure zebras enabled all the time. The next function is especially handy for those taking images of people or animals. Because as you might know, the A7 Mark III has excellent eye autofocus, but unfortunately the eye autofocus tracking is not enabled by default. So you'll have to go into the menu settings to turn it on. And then I suggest assigning a custom button to the eye autofocus tracking to activate it when you're shooting. To enable eye autofocus, go into the camera one menu and then go to AF2 on page six of 14. Here you can select face eye autofocus set and then turn it on. Once that is done, go to the camera two menu on page eight of nine, where it says custom operations panel. Select custom key and set one of the custom buttons. I use the AEL button to activate eye autofocus. So whenever I hold that button, the camera will track the subject's eyes and focus will always stay on the subject's eyes. Keep in mind that the eye autofocus only works when you are in the continuous autofocus mode. So you've already seen me set up a few custom buttons throughout this video. And the Sony a7 Mark III has a ton of custom buttons that you can set and I 100% recommend that you do that. So let me just explain a little bit more about these custom buttons. In the camera two menu at page eight of nine, you have the option to set custom buttons or custom keys for when you are either in photo mode, in video mode or in playback mode. And when you go into one of these menus, you can set a custom function for each of these buttons. So the control wheel is this one right here. And then you have custom button one to four, which are marked on the camera by C1, C2, C3, and C4. Multi SLC center button is this button right here. Then of course the center button is this one right here, left, right, and down. And lastly, AEL and the auto focus on button. You can see it says focus hold button here. That's because the lens I have on this camera right now has a customizable function button. So I'm not gonna go any further into which way to set up all these custom buttons because I think this is entirely up to your own preferences and how you use your camera. But if you would be interested in a more in-depth video about this, feel free to let me know in the comments. 
I think by now you can tell that one of the strengths of the A7 Mark III and one of the things that I personally love the most about this camera is the fact that you can customize it so much. And I already showed you how to set up a few custom buttons, but another really important and handy thing I want to show you is how to set up your own custom quick menu. So the quick menu or function menu is a series of shortcuts that allows you to access different functions of your camera. The great thing is that you can customize this menu so you can include shortcuts of functions that you use the most. To do this, go to the camera two menu and then go to page eight of nine. Here you can select functions menu set. On the first page you can select all the shortcuts that will appear on the upper row of the functions menu. And on the second page you can select all the shortcuts that will appear on the lower row of the functions menu. So for example function upper one refers to this shortcut slot in the functions menu. To change a shortcut just select a slot, for example function upper one, and then choose which function you want to assign to this slot. Let's for example choose APS-C shooting. To confirm and save just hit enter by pushing the center button. You'll see that now the first shortcut slot in the functions menu has been changed to APS-C shooting. And I recommend that you just take some time to figure out which functions make sense for you to have in this menu. I actually change up this menu from time to time depending on which functions that I'm using a lot. All right, these are just a few things that I think will improve the usability of your A7 Mark III and allow you to get better results with this awesome camera. Of course, there are tons more options and settings that you can change for any specific use, but I hope that this video will at least help you to get more comfortable with using your Sony A7 Mark III. So that's it for me. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.